Medic Mind. Motivate, mentor, maximize. Welcome to lesson five, weighted means. This is a topic which many students have not tackled before, but it can come up from time to time in the UK CAT. First of all, when you hear means, don't assume that it is easy. Simple means are, but weighted means can be a tad tricky. They can be slightly difficult to get your head around at first, but with some practice, it should be fairly simple. The formula for weighted means is the sum of each individual value times its individual weight. This might seem quite abstract for now, but don't worry, we'll go through what this formula means in the future slides. First of all, let's start off with the basics of basics, simple means. What is the mean of one, two, three, and four? When we calculate a simple mean or average, we give equal weight to each number. Normally, we add the numbers up and divide by the number of figures. So you would add one plus two plus three plus four and divide by four, which equals 2.5, easy enough. When we work out simple means, we're assuming that each number has an equal weighting. For example, one, two, three, and four have a weighting of 0 0.25 or 25% or one quarter. Now let's plug this in to the weighted means formula. So multiply one by its weight, two by its weight, and so on. Obviously, this is a long-winded method for simple means, so we would never do this for simple means. It is just to show you how the weighted means formula works. Now imagine we change the weights. One, two, and four have a weighting of 0 0.1 or 10%, and three has a weighting of 0 0.7 or 70%. We can now plug this back in to the weighted means formula, and you get the answer of 2.8. Let's have a go at a practice example. Whenever you do weighted mean questions, you want to isolate the values which will make up your mean, in this case in red, and the values which will be used to make your weights, in this case blue. The answer here is 19 years. So first of all, you want to identify which figures you will use to calculate your mean. These are 17 and 20. Then you can give each figure a weighting. So 17 would have a weighting of one third and 20 has a weighting of two thirds. Notice that you made the weightings from the total number of people in the group. There were 10 boys out of 30 which means 10 out of 30, which is one third. There are 20 girls out of 30, which equates to two thirds. And lastly, you plug these into the weighted means formula and get the final answer of 19. You might ask, why don't you just add up the total years and divide by the total number of students? Well, this method is slightly longer and for complicated questions, it will not work very effectively. So it is good to practice the weighted mean approach now. Let's have a go at this question. Sadhu wants to buy a new camera and rates each camera based on resolution, battery life and ease of use. However, he rates each factor differently. You have to work out the average rating here for both Kony and Sanin. Remember, isolate the numbers which will make up your mean first and don't get them confused with the numbers which will make up your weights. So, as we said, the first step is to identify the figures which will make up the mean. 
For Kony, they are 8, 6 and 7. For Sanon, they are 9, 4 and 6. Now, give each figure a weighting. For example, resolution has a weighting of 50% or 0 0.5. Battery life has a weighting of 30% or 0 0.3 and so on. Now, plug the values and weights into the weighted mean formula and calculate the weighted mean for each camera. Kony scores 7.2 and Sanon scores 6.9. So the Kony is the better camera. What happens if the weights are not given to you? Well, in certain questions, the weights will not be given in the form of decimals, percentages or fractions. Looking back at the first question we did, you were not actually given the weights. Instead, you had to work them out as one third for boys and two thirds for girls using the question information. In the next example, you are again not given the weights. Have a go at this question. Remember, first identify the values which will make up your mean and then allocate the weights. Do not get mixed up between your values and your weights. So as we said, first of all, identify the figures you will use to calculate the mean. The figures are 1, 2, 5 and 7 days. Then give each figure a weighting. There are 52 weeks, so we can give weights as fractions of 52. For example, one day has a weighting of 2 over 52. Two days has a weighting of 14 over 52. And then, as always, plug the values and the weights into the weighted means formula. For this question, you can save time by dividing by 52 at the end. So do 1 times 2 plus 2 times 14 plus 5 times 8 plus 7 times 28 and then divide by 52 at the end. And this will save you time rather than multiplying by 52 each time. Remember back to tutorial 2 on estimation. We said that often you can do a rough estimate to make sure you have the right general range for the answer. First, make sure the number is between 0 and 7. There are 7 days in a week. It might sound silly, but many people use 2, 14, 8 and 28 as the values and the days as the weights and get a number much higher than 7. Don't forget common sense. You can only have a maximum of seven days per week. Also, you can see that Jude works for seven days for the majority of the year. So the answer needs to be closer to seven than to one. Therefore, 5.12 does seem a good fit. Thank you for watching this free Medic Mind tutorial. For £30, you can unlock all 150 tutorials in our online course. The course covers four full days of UK CAT teaching, as well as a course to help you with your personal statement and interview. You're free to ask as many questions as you'd like to our teachers, and with each tutorial, you can read along using our five UK CAT ebooks covering 500 pages of theory and questions to guide you every step of the way.